OK, so let's take a look at what these exponential functions would look like graphically. So let's start off with a really simple one. How about f of x equals 2 to the x? Well, the best way to get a sense of what the graph of this looks like is just to plot some points. So let's just plot some points and see what happens. So here's my axis. And I guess I can make a little table over here off on the right. And I can put in uh, x's and f of x's. So let's start off with 0. If I plug in 0 for x, now remember, now these are exponent values, so we have to be careful. This is now 2 raised to the 0 power, which we talked about and saw equals 1. What if I put a 1 in here? Then 2 to the first is just 2. What if I put a 2 in there? Then I see 2 squared should be 4. If I put a 3 in here, I see 2 cubed, which is 8. So let's graph this. 0, we have 1. At 1, I have 2. So at 1, I go up to 2. At 2, I'm at 4. So at 2, I double. So I go way up here. And at 4, I'm sorry, at 3, I even double this. So I'm almost off the page. Dramatic growth. Whew, just goes right up there. All right, but what about negative x's? Well, let's see. Where can I put them? How to make a chart over here? This just illustrates that charts can be made any way at all. You don't always have to be vertical. You can be horizontal. So suppose I put in minus 1. Well, what is 2 to the minus 1 power? Well, remember, a negative exponent means a flip. So 2 to the minus 1 is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the first, which is just 1 over 2, or a half. So at 1, at minus 1, rather, I'm at a half. What about minus 2? Well, now I want you to remember the negative sign flips. I see 2 to the minus 2, 2 to the minus 2 would be 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. So look what's happening here. I'm getting smaller and smaller fractions here. So the graph, if I connect these points, seems to look like this. Looks like that. And that, in fact, is the standard graph for an exponential function of this sort. Now let's think about it for a second. First of all, it seems like I never touch this, this, this uh, line here, the x-axis. Is that true? Well, for me to cross the x-axis, that would mean that I would have a 0 of this function. Is there any value of x I can plug in that would make this 0? Well, 2 to any power will never give me 0. I can't take 2 and raise it to some power and get 0. You may say, what about 0? No, no. 2 to the 0, remember, is 1. But as I put in smaller and smaller numbers, negative like 1,000, negative a million, I'm going to get 1 over bigger and bigger quantities. So I approach 0, but I never touch it. In fact, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote off on the left. It's a left horizontal asymptote, because this curve is going to approach it, but never touch it. The other intriguing thing that's worth not noticing is that with this simple exponential function, th the function never seems to be negative. Does that make sense? It sure does, because whatever you raise 2 to, you can never make that thing negative. 2 to any power will always be positive, always be positive, never be negative, never be 0. So in fact, this should always live above the x-axis, and in fact, this is the curve. Dramatic, dramatic growth on the right, and then very, very gentle Grow, uh, a decrease to the x-axis, approaching the x-axis on the left. Now, once you have this as the general shape of an of a, um, exponential, you can now ask, OK, what happens, for example, if I change this number? Like, what happens if I look at this? g of x, let's say, equals 3 to the x. So what if I, what if I change this and enlarge, enlarge the base? How does that affect the picture? Well, if you think about it, you can plot some points. I'll let you try to plot the points. At 0, we'd still be 0, because 3 to the 0 would still be 0. But already at 1, I'll see a difference, because I'll see 3 to the first, which is 3. So I'll be a little bit bigger. And at 2, I'd see 3 squared, which is going to be uh, 9 rather than 
eight, so I get bigger. And what happens, what you see basically, is that this thing takes off even faster. It lives above this line. It lives above it. What happens here? You may think, oh, it's going to live above it here. But actually, no, it's going to actually live below it here because this is going to shrink faster, right? Think, for example, what happens at negative two. If I plug in negative two, I have three to the negative two. That's one over three squared. That's a ninth. Whereas when I plugged in a negative two in here, I was only at a fourth. So this is dropping really fast. So what happens is to the right, I am just growing much faster. I live above it. I come down and meet right at zero, one. But then I come down below it. And I undercut the competition. Still asymptotic. So in fact, the higher you make the base here, the faster it takes off on the right, just really takes off really fast, so it's going to be above it. But then on the left, it's going to jump down even faster, so it's going to come down below it like that, undercut it. So that's the general shapes of these things. So that's what happens if you, if you increase the exponent and decrease it. Maybe I'll throw one picture of that so you can make sure you really see it. I'm going to draw a real dramatic picture just so you can really get a sense of this. So here's the, I'm drawing this just so you can, so this might be like, um, 2 to the x, 2 to the x. And now if I look at 3 to the x, it'll be more dramatic here, above, comes to the same point, but then drops below. See, that'd be 3 to the x. What do you think like 5 to the x would look like? Roughly speaking, where would that live? Well, that would be even higher here and then come down even lower yet. So it'd be more dramatic. Again, the higher you make it, the more drama. But it doesn't touch, it's just asymptotic. Doesn't touch, just asymptotic. And you can plot points and see what those values are. Okay, neat. Now, what about if I look at something like this? What if I look at like, you know, one half to the x? So what if I put in a base that's actually less than one? Less than one, but but positive. Well, uh, we could plot points and see, or we could just use the facts we know about functions and exponents and realize that that actually equals. 2 to the minus x by laws of exponents. If I flip, that's a negative exponent. So I can write as 2 to the minus x. And what does minus x do when I have a function x like this? Well, if you may remember from the graphing things, that actually is a flip this way. It's a flip among, uh, along the y-axis. And why? Because I take every x value and I replace it by a negative x value. So I just flip the picture. So in fact, fractional things of this sort, 1 over 2 to the x, well, that picture actually is uh, just this. It's this old picture, 2 to the x, flipped over. I will attempt to draw that now in brown. Good luck to me. Not bad, not bad. This would be 1 half to the x. And the reason why I saw that is because it equals 2 to the minus x. So 2 to the minus x is just 2 to the x, but flipped along this axis. So it looks like that. So in, in, gra in fact, graphing things of the form you know, 1 over 5 to the x, you just graph 5 to the x and flip it over here so it would have a very sharp thing and drop down here. OK, well, let's take a look uh, up next at what happens if I put in a negative number in here, and then take a look at some slightly more exotic functions and their graphs. And we'll just be using shifting techniques there. So first, I'll graph one of these simple things and start shifting all over the place. OK, I'll catch up with you there.